All right, folks, let me lay down this crazy tale about Iron Mike Tyson going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a dangerous thug. Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Picture this, the mid-80s, a time when 19-year-old Mike was wrecking anyone in his path. Right, they can find some he was a wrecking ball in the ring, and opponents couldn't resist the lure of a good paycheck despite the damage Tyson would deliver. One such contender was Mitch Green, a crafty American boxer of Mayan descent, who seamlessly blended criminal activities with his professional boxing career. Standing at almost two meters tall, Green had an impressive track record in the heavyweight division, including a victory in the prestigious Golden Gloves tournament and matches against formidable opponents like Trevor Burbick. With 16 wins, 10 by knockout, Green had earned his reputation as a force to be reckoned with. Meanwhile, Iron Mike Tyson was ascending the boxing world's ranks. Prior to facing Green, Tyson had already gained global recognition with dominating performances in the ring. His reputation preceded him, and opponents feared his formidable strength and relentless aggression. On May 3, 1985, Tyson faced James Tillis, a fellow countryman, in a fight that ended without a knockout signaling a shift in the perception of Tyson's invincibility. During this time, Mitch Green, skilled in trash talking, started hurling insults at Tyson, eager to get a fight with the rising star. Green publicly mocked Tyson, calling him a paper champion and other choice words. The audacious Green even taunted Tyson, saying, Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. These disrespectful words fueled Tyson's determination to teach this bandit a lesson in the ring, and the cunning plan of the New York thug worked. Finally, on that fateful night in 1986, the much-anticipated match between two boxing bad boys took place. The atmosphere was electric, as the fighters entered the ring. Tyson exuded confidence, his eyes locked onto his brazen opponent. The audience anxiously awaited the clash of these titans. The bell rang. The fight was on. Mike Tyson comes out like a locomotive, going straight for Mitch Green. He's successful, is to box. Pretty much do the same thing a boxer should do to a puncher. Keep that jab in his face and not be intimidated well, him, by his punching power. Mike Tyson said that he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy. A little reluctant to go full steam. So when he got in the boxing ring, is either crazy or lying. What is your journey? It's that anticipation of facing uh, your opposition, uh, knowing that he's capable, and the fact that the crowd here. It's similar to Joe Freed. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Now we see some hand movement. Green is off balance when he throws his punch. I was, um, I was working for good tillers by Tyson. And shots to the body. Body shot slows down your arm. Uh, As expected, the young phenomenon left no chance for the bandit, delivering a total beating throughout the entire fight. After the match, Tyson confessed that he didn't want to knock out Green as the process itself brought him immense pleasure. Green got a couple of punches in, but as far as how solid those punches are, there's no comparison. Now Green holding and hitting. For Mr. Green from home behind the head. Bad habit of leaning back. Watch the left hook of Mike Tyson land. Every time Mr. Green moves backwards. So he's able to throw some quicker shots. There's the left hook I was talking about. You notice that there is no mouthpiece, and he did draw a warning from Luis Rivera, the referee, about holding. Green's in trouble. No shots to the body is doing his taking his toe. Really working. A lot of body, a lot of leverage. The body shots. Watch for the left hook. There it is again, Barry. Powerful boy, boy. Tyson had against Tillis. And what a shot. Hands high. He 
works his way in. That was no need for him to slow down. The momentum. Now here we see why, why it's so difficult for Green to move because good left hook, solid left hook. Left hand, top of the head. That right hand, the left hook of, of uh, Mike Tyson's very, very famous. That was another big shot. What his best weapon was, they said, by elusiveness. He has said nothing about his punching power. And that's something that he did not do against Quick Tillis. Yo, 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 yo. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, man. He's talking, Tyson's talking to Mitch now. This fight, he fought hard for about five rounds, and then he seemed to coast a little bit. Look at the way he's doing now. Slip punches. Big right hand. Big, and that wobble, Mitch Green, for a second there. You see your tired fighter up is to at least clear your head or either to um, how hard as Mike Tyson hits. Can be learned in talking to some of the people he fought. Look at the look at here, look at here. Just right laughing at And Green seems to me, Ray, to be doing all the wrong things. That's Another big left hook. He did pace himself, and what a right hand. There is such frustration at full speed. Look at here, you can tell that he is not concerned about going the distance, uh, throwing those shots. There again, Mitch Green is throwing his punches, not doing any damage. Look at the ring. Chopping right hand, did get in. I mean, Tyson, they're good up with that. He has to take the standing bench. Another couple body shots. Coming with that right hand for Tyson. His best rally of the fight right here. Look at Here again. Oh, what a left hand. Better way to approach fights like this. Following this beating, the New York thug decided to quit boxing and announced the end of his career. However, his ego couldn't bear the defeat and the ruffian decided to take revenge on his tormentor, but on his own terms, the laws of the streets. Early in the morning on August 23rd, 1988, Mike, along with his friend, arrived at a Harlem clothing store to pick up a jacket. Green learned Tyson's whereabouts from one of his acquaintances and soon arrived at the store. Seeing Mike, Mitch started verbally provoking and insulting him, demanding a rematch. After a short argument, the old rivals resorted to physical confrontation. According to witnesses, Green attempted the first strike, but Tyson quickly took control and knocked the blood off his feet with a right cross. Then Iron Mike got into the car, but Green grabbed the door, refusing to let go. That's when Tyson unleashed his lethal combinations, leaving Green unconscious on the asphalt. In an interview, Iron Mike admitted that at that moment he thought he had killed his tormentor, but fortunately, it turned out otherwise. As a result of the fight, Mitch's left eye was completely swollen, his nose was broken, later doctors put five stitches on it, and a couple of ribs were damaged. Meanwhile, Mike seriously injured his hand from those bare-knuckle blows. This injury cost Iron Mike a postponement of several months for an already scheduled title defense against British boxer Frank Bruno for the undisputed world champion title. All right, folks, check this out. Years later, in 1997, Green decides to reignite the pursuit of Tyson, but this time through the legal system, suing him for 25 million over bodily harm. Now, here's the kicker. The former thug managed to win only 45 grand from the lawsuit, which didn't even cover the legal costs. Fast forward 35 years after that fiery showdown in Harlem, Iron Mike, in one of his recent interviews admitted, I apologize for what happened that night. Now, take this literally. This statement directed at Mitch Green shows us that even the toughest, seemingly ruthless fighters can evolve and own up to their mistakes. That's a wrap, folks. If you enjoyed this segment, smash that like button, share your thoughts on the episode, and tell me what you think. Was beating up your opponent to that extent justified, or could this conflict have been avoided through a different approach? Drop your opinions in the comments. I'm eager to hear what you think.